Hey, my name is Chris from Queens, and I'm listening to the Hood Rap Recap Podcast. It was an early morning meetup at the mansion on the mountain. The maestro still had glitter on his face. They led us to the office, and once my eyes adjusted, I took a little look around the place. On the mantel was a portrait of his father and the fortune. It amassed from being ruthless but polite And a bottle with a model A specific British clipper ship On his desk there was a pistol and a pipe We got bored So we started a podcast about the best bar band in the land, man This is the Hood Rat Recap and we are back. We are steady stream of the unified scene, all the news and reviews of the band that you love, we love, and as the great Craig Finn said on his first album, February is about as long as it is wide. Hello, everybody. This is Stage Right Mike on the Mic, and I can talk hold steady all night. And when I like to talk hold steady heavy, I like to throw up the rat signal. And just like that, the hood rat pack has assembled. And as always... We start out with the unified scenes for your own King of Queens, Gasper. Gasper, how you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, man. But you know what? I'm trying to get people to call me Jif. Why is that, Gasper? Well, because all the choosy mothers choose me, man. Ooh. <laughs> this might be the worst one I ever did. And how's that working out for you, Gasper? Not very good, man. Not surprisingly, not very good. People keep calling me schmuckers. Uh, and it's called smuckers, you dope. I was going to call you schmuckers. <laughs> you are a smuck. Did I say it wrong? <laughs> yeah, you did say it wrong. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is definitely the worst. Uh, I mean, this is definitely the done. worst one you've ever done. I mean, <laughs> wait, is brutal. Smucker's the one that has the grape jelly mixed in with the peanut butter? Because that is, Smucker's it's not as good as it sounds. the one with the natural peanut oil. And no, like, that, it, that's I don't know which, which is the one that has the, I don't know the brand that has the, the peanut butter mixed in with, but I agree, it's it's terrible. Smucker's <laughs> might do that too, but. Oh, well, anyway. Hi, well, hi everyone. <laughs> that's the sound of our third mic and our producer, Kevin is whenever. Kevin, how you doing? I mean, this show is a disaster right off the bat. And I'm sorry, everybody, who had to put up with that one. The joke was supposed to be he was going to say smuckers, and then I was ready to come with schmuckers, and he right away threw schmuckers, and now I didn't know what to say. So, hi, everybody. <laughs> Do you want to retake this whole fucking thing? No, 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 no. no. I, this has got to live the way it was. I will say this. I, I'm a little tired and wiped out only because I just got off a plane this morning. I was out in LA, so I know you guys recorded and chatted uh, while I was gone. So why don't you give me the, the brief story on that? Yeah, man. This So this has been a year in the making. If we're keeping time by massive night shows, it was two massive night shows ago that speaking to Craig in Lake Street Bar, he recommended that we interview Nick Holloman, who is the artist behind many of the Hold Steady posters that we all know and love, and as well as uh, the cover art to Thrashing to the Passion. So between um, you know everything going on with uh, the 20-year the anniversary of the Hold Steady, it's been quite, quite a bit to cover, but um, we finally got a chance. Me and Mike got to sit down with him, and I thought we had to have a great interview for you guys. Yeah, we had a great talk with Nick, so let's jump right into it. When she asked if she could choke you Underneath the black light poster With the spaceman saying Take me to your dealer All right, so we're joined by Nick Holloman Who is uh, the artist behind many of the Hold Steady posters that you're familiar with And also the cover art of Thrashing, right? Yep, yep, I did uh, Thrashing And then also did uh, the second Craig solo record Awesome uh, Faith and Awesome Future. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Nick. Uh, where'd you say you were uh, joining us from? Uh, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. So um, I guess to start off, like you're a Hold Steady fan, right? Like how did uh, you get into the Hold Steady? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, actually, it's funny. Uh, I think the first time that I listened to uh, the Hold Steady was coming from Lifter Puller. Uh, so I was a fan of Lifter Puller, but I got into Lifter Puller because of Aesthetic Apparatus, who is a uh, 
a design studio up in Minneapolis who did a lot of the early uh, Hold Steady poster stuff. And they still do, you know, a handful here and there. I think they did Constructive Summer a few years ago. They did the first Av anniversary show um, a year or two ago. So they they still do a few things, but uh, I was a big fan of them when I was in college. And, you know, I'd see that they'd do a poster for somebody and be like, I bet they're pretty cool. I'll check them out. Um, so that's how I got into Lifter Puller. And then, you know, from there, obviously going into the Hold Steady. Okay, so you've been a fan from the beginning, the yeah. inception of Hold Steady. Awesome. So how did you come to start doing uh, artwork for him? Uh, so there is a, a bar and venue that's uh, a couple blocks from my house called The Earl. Um, they've played there a handful of times, but the uh, the guy who used to book there is named Patrick, and we were, were friends from hanging around, and he knew – uh, that I was a fan of the Hold Steady. And when Craig was coming through on his first solo tour, he was like, hey, you want to do the poster for the show? I was like, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so did that poster. Um, that one, if I remember correctly, it was uh, based on Honolulu Blues, mm-hmm. um, which was the single that was out at the time. The uh, whole record had not come out yet. Um, so that's all I really had to work with um, for the uh, for the solo stuff. So I did that poster. Uh, after the show, you know, kind of hung around, talked to Craig, we connected. And then a couple months later, they were coming back through as just kind of a one-off show playing at the Earl again. And, uh, that's when I did the poster that's behind you now, which, uh, you know, I don't think we'll be able to see on audio too well, but it, uh, <laughs> it's all the, uh, silhouettes of, uh, all the different musical artists that were referenced in a uh, hold steady lyrics at the time of making. Um, so that was the, the initial thing. And then from there, we've just kind of kept in touch and, you know, it's ramped up a lot more over the past few years. Um, obviously with the band ramping back up over the last few years, um, it's kind of taken off from there. And now, you know, we, uh, we work pretty closely together and, and do quite a bit of stuff. Right. Yeah. I should tell you, Nick, uh, Gasper might be your biggest fan. He has, I've seen his, <laughs> art. he's got like a whole wall at home and then at his office. I've seen that one too, where he's got, he's got to have like every poster you've ever made. I say, <laughs> yeah, it gets a, a little much. It's I literally every room in my house has at least one poster of yours. And oh, then I, I have a, an office at work that they tease me all the time because it's, it might as well be a shrine to the band. It's every poster on the wall and it's literally every wall is covered. Um, yeah. I actually just in, included spotlighting for the the posters this week. That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, and the, the one uh, you referenced above my head, uh, the, the silhouette post, that's one of my favorites. That's, I, yeah. I love that. That must have been incredible to put together. Yeah, it was really fun. Now, now I can't tell from the picture, but is that the uh, one for the actual show at the Earl, or was that the uh, – the one we redid for the anniversary because we, we did a reprint and added a few extra ones. Um, this was after Teeth Dreams came out that we redid it. I want to uh, say it's added that a one. few extra on there. Okay. So actually you can't see it, but th- so this is my living room and that's pretty much the centerpiece of my living room. It's <laughs> both the silhouette posters and then the state posters. Yep. The, the one with the, the whole country. Yeah. Um, so when we, we did the country one is when we redid and updated that one with the silhouettes because, uh, well, the original silhouette one we did before uh, Teeth Dreams came out, um, and then that one was after. So we there was a few on there that we were able to come back and add in, and then also added in some from the you know bonus tracks that were on the anniversary re- reissues of Boys and Girls and Separation Sunday and all those. So we got to add a few extra in there. Yeah, that, it's such an amazing concept. I, I love that one. And it's a good conversation piece. Yeah, thank um, you. So one of the things about your posters that I love is – that style of of a unique poster for a band that that's something from, like I remember from like not that I remember but I've seen from the seventies. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm fifty, so like I was a kid in the seventies, but like the Jefferson Airplane and like they yeah. were so unique to themselves. And your style is very unique. Like, um, can you talk a little bit about that? Like, what goes into coming up with the concepts of the posters? Yeah, I mean, wh- whenever I'm doing a poster, you know. I, I used to do a, a decent amount of posters for other uh, shows and bands and stuff, especially down at the Earl from, you know, down the street from my house. I would, you know, kind of for a few years, I was doing quite a few for just any show that was coming through there. I was uh, trading free poster design for uh, free show access uh, <laughs> uh, for a few years. Um, but yeah, when, whenever I sit down to do one, you know, I think the, the most important part for me when I'm kind of concepting through and figuring out what I'm going to do is like, it needs to be specific to who you're making the poster for. Like, I love a great illustration, 
But if you can put anybody's name underneath it and it doesn't matter, then, you know, that doesn't really interest me too much. You know, I can, I can be impressed with how it's rendered and think it's, it's put together really well. But if I could put any band name under it, you know, it just, it just doesn't have that feeling for me that it needs to have. So for the most part, especially with the hold steady, I mean, Craig's lyrics are so immersive and have so many stories and details that there's quite a bit to work with. Um, but, but it's all based there. It has to be specific for the band, whether it's, you know, something about the band itself or something about a specific lyric or song or meaning. But, you know, I, I feel like, uh, at least hopefully, on uh, all the posters I've done for them. Like, I don't think you could put another band's name on there and it really make any sense as a poster. <laughs> so that's kind of always the most important thing for me. And, you know, I think it works well, um, you know, with the Hold Steady's fans. Everybody, you know, there are casual fans, but I think we all know for the most part, we're we're all a little obsessed and, and know maybe a little bit too much. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so it's fun to get to play off of some of those little details. Um, and you know, that's really the base is it, it has to be specific for who you're doing it for, or it's just another poster, I guess. Right. Absolutely. And we were just talking about that before you came on. Um, there's so many little details. You highlight them on your Instagram, which I love. Um, like for example, the Vegas show on the cards, you have all the, the water towers, like in mm -hmm. the cards. And it's like, those are the details. Like you really got to look at the poster, um, which is awesome. Cause the designs are always like, fairly simple like in in concept but then the details are are in there as an easter egg which is very apropos for the whole study and yeah awesome. and, and you know that's kind of how i'm i'm actually working on another one right now oh, yeah. uh All right. so i was you know talking talking about it with my wife last night and we were you know looking at it and we're like all right how I got to figure out how to get all this other stuff in there. And then once we get that, you know, we'll be done with the poster, but then that's the fun part where you get to go in and add like 20 different small little elements in there that, you know, maybe somebody will see, maybe somebody won't. Um, but you know, that's the fun part. I think, you know, I don't, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the, uh, Chicago poster that I did maybe five, five or six years ago. Um, it's the apartment building with the lights on it um, and the lights uh, form the stay positive logo yes. um, of the ones that are lit up. Uh, yeah. So th that one I think is my perfect example of being able to finish the design and then go in and add as many possible things as you can. I mean, I had however many windows there to work with. So I was able to throw a bunch of Chicago references and then a bunch of uh, hold steady references and somewhere, I think it's towards the top on the left side, uh, I threw a picture of myself with my uh, son on top of my shoulders in one of those windows. Oh, okay. um, yeah. So that's always fun to be able to, you know, look back through that thing and find all the things. And, you know, I've forgotten about some of them when I look at it. So <laughs> even then, it's still fun to go back and look at that kind of stuff. So it's almost like uh, a Where's Waldo type <laughs> Right. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, yeah. I'm trying to think what else is in there. There's like a, it's like a Michael Jordan in the window. There's, uh, <laughs> you know, like some stuff for touch and go, which is a great label out of Chicago. Um, and you know, all that kind of stuff is always fun to, to kind of get in and, uh, see what all you can put in and, and know that some people are going to see it. Some people aren't, and that's cool. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's just that ability to kind of show those to people when you're, when you're talking to them, they're like, Oh, I totally see that now. And I, you know, that adds an extra layer to it. Um, which I think is always fun. That's awesome. I can always recognize your work immediately. Cause it's just got like a, a clean, like line, um, optimistic look to it. Or I guess I'm, I'm not an art student. So sorry, but how would you describe your look? Is it, <laughs> I like Andy Warhol. That's all I know. I don't know anything else about art, but <laughs> yeah, no, that didn't know that, that makes total sense. It's, uh, it's interesting. I think there's, you know, there's a ton of different poster artists. There's a ton of different ways to do a poster. Some people are, you know, much more, you know, illustrators who go in there and they can, you know, draw whatever they want. And you're like, all right, that is not something I can do. I wish I could do that. You know, I can get by with drawing, but in the end, you know, a lot of my stuff is really collage based where I'm trying to, you know, have an idea and it's like, you know, I, I could draw that, but it's not going to end up being exactly how I want it to be. Um, so it's more about, you know, putting together a collage and then redoing the collage on top of itself. 
um, to, to get it all uniform and getting it together where it looks like it's a, a unified piece and, and fits together. Um, but that, that's typically my process. I'll kind of have an idea. I'm like, all right, I think I know what this is going to look like in my head. And then I start just assembling it together. And then once it's assembled, you know, kind of in the, in the shape and composition that I want, that's when I kind of start going in and, and pulling it all into a unified look and feel and, uh, and final piece there. Hmm. Like I see you have a dark night poster behind you as a, do you get kind of use comic books as an inspiration? I kind of get the comic book feel to them. Yeah. Um, actually it's funny. The, uh, the Earl poster that is, uh, behind Gasper there, uh, that is a 100% straight ripoff of the back of a Marvel comics puzzle that I had as a kid. Um, oh. you, you know, those, you know, you've, I'm sure you've seen them, those posters of, you know, it has like hundreds and hundreds of Marvel characters on it and they're just yeah. all standing there in a big, uh, glob. So that was, that was the puzzle, but the back of the box looked exactly like this and had the silhouettes of everybody with a number and then told you their name just in a list down the, down the side. Oh. So yeah, de- definitely, uh, some comic stuff happening in there. Um, and you know, it's just the storytelling. Um, you know, I, I enjoy that kind of stuff because comics have, you know, they tell stories visually and you know, that's what I'm trying to do with these posters is boil down a story into one image most of the time. Hmm. So just to give people a reference, the, um, you're, you're responsible for many of the massive nights posters, um, going back to probably massive nights three, I think is the first one. Yep, three was the first one. That's the one with the uh, the, the balloons. balloons. Yep. Um, so that one, you know, uh, we kind of always thought of Massive Nights as kind of like you know the prom for mm. for all the Hold Steady fans, and you know, I always just remember those you know mylar balloons at school dances. <laughs> you know, they say what year it is, or it says prom, or whatever. Um, I was like, what if we just tried to make those um, <laughs> and uh, and do the Stay Positive logo after? Uh, out of it and that's kind of where that one was born from nice so and i love the massive nights posters they're they're always awesome but specifically the 2022 poster can you talk a little bit about that one because that one is so intricate and there's so many little little pieces to it um that's the one that kind of looks like uh, it could almost be hanging in a Mason temple or something like that. Oh, well, yeah. that, that was the, uh, that was the inspiration for that one. So okay. yeah, <laughs> at, at the beginning, you know, it's like massive nights is the prom for all of us, but the more we go, you see the same people, there becomes this like secret language between everyone who's there. You know, it's how you greet people. It's, you know, everybody doing something at the same time during a song. And it's like, it, it it's kind of turned into this secret society um, in my mind. And that's kind of where we started um, with that. Actually the first iteration of that year was, I was like, you know, how do we figure out, how do we represent like a secret language uh, that we all share? And uh, the first thing I did was go through and, retyped out all the lyrics to massive nights as a song, but, uh, only using emojis. And it actually was pretty oh. readable if you know the lyrics and you know what you're looking at. Um, but in the end it just, you know, it wasn't a great poster itself. Um, so it's like, all right, we like, I like this idea of, you know, the secret language, secret society, what's another way to approach it. And that's, that's where I went down that kind of, you know, Mason, you know, secret society kind of thing and just played off of that as much as possible. Um, and th- that one was really, really fun because you get to get in there and look at every little part and be like, all right, I, I see this. And it was one of the first ones where I started combining more than one song mm-hmm. into something. So it was like the idea is just around secret languages, secret societies. So let's pull out some lyrics that, you know, talk about secrets and things like that. And those are running throughout. And then you have, you know, the little crystal ball at the bottom with the horse in it, to uh, reference Chips Ahoy. Mm-hmm. You've got the king and the queen up on the side. And, you know, I, I, I think my favorite little detail in that one is there's just a circle 
of uh, letters and it's over there on the left side. Mm-hmm. And all that is, is just the, the guys in the band's initials. So yeah. um, it's just a string of letters there that you read around and you know, you're like, Oh, okay. That's Bobby. That's Craig. That's Franz. That's Steve. That's Tad. And, you know, and Galen in there and we've got, you've got it all there. But when you look at it, it's just like a string of 10 letters and you're like, what is this? Yep. Um, it's, <laughs> it's funny. The, I don't know if you remember the, the positive posting group, but I remember when that picture first got posted and everyone was deciphering like, Oh, this is from this. This is from that. And that's the, that's the one that stumped most people. And they're like, what is that? And I'm like, it's their initials. How do you not yeah. know it's their initials? <laughs> <laughs> I really like the uh the Sixers poster. The uh what was that for? That was That was uh Jersey City last yep. year. Jersey uh, City. That, that, yep. Yeah, that that's uh that's another uh, that's another good one um that I really like, but it's interesting uh you know based on the the comic thing. Um so that the original iteration of that was like a pulp comic uh looking frame uh depicting uh the guy you know trying to kiss her and getting pushed away and all that kind of stuff and had the the nagel poster in there and all of those <laughs> types of things but it, it same kind of thing it just didn't quite fully work like that so then reapproaching it and you know that one is a perfect example of like i don't you know fully illustrate stuff a lot of times that's a collage you know, that's yeah. a collage of all these elements. I, you know, I shot a few of those pictures. I pulled a few of them from just weird stock photo sites and, you know, just putting them back together and unifying it. Um, and then to bring in the little human element of the shadow of them dancing, um, mm-hmm. I think really kind of pulled that one together where it isn't just like, here's a still life of a bunch of objects that happen to be mentioned in this song. <laughs> um, you know, it really kind of finalized that scene. Yeah, you can. It almost like the picture almost has movement because you can see the shadows of them dancing over everything that's described in the song. Like, so you have a Nagel. So, what's it like having? A, I kind of like it because you have another artist in your mm-hmm. inside your uh, piece of work there. So yeah, so uh, hopefully I won't get in too much trouble. For that. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> the patent's got to be his stuff was all in what the eighties, so his patent's yeah. got to be up by now. Or right? how's that work? <laughs> I'm sure, we'll we'll refer to it as a transformative work, so we'll be all right. <laughs> I don't. That's that's one of the ones I get the the most comments about at work. I have that in my office. <laughs> um, so people really do love that one, and it's it's funny because like you mentioned the Chicago one, and and it's. Like basically, I had to make a rule for myself where, like, you have to go to the show to get the poster. Mm-hmm. If you're not at the show, you can't get the poster. And he he lives it too. I tried get him. I tried get him the Minnesota State Fair one, and he's like, "Oh, I really like it," but he goes, "I'm not at the show, so don't send it to me." So <laughs> yeah. he really lives it. And I love there. that image. I have it on a t-shirt. I got it too. Yeah. I have it on a t-shirt. Which oddly All enough, right. I I I'm bought the it. t-shirt at the Jersey City City show because um, <laughs> that's where Josh had told me that. Um, there was like a whole order mix yeah. up and he had a big problem with it. He was like, I got all these shirts. I'm like, oh, then I'm buying one. Yep. And so, yeah, and- I think, uh, yeah, Josh was emailing me. I think I sent him like the files for the shirts again, like two days before the fair because the original order got delayed in transit or something. And he had somebody in town who's like, I can do, you know, a rush job as quick as I can. Uh, but those were not part of it. They're like, we can do like a one color shirt and we'll get you some. So it was like at, at the fair show, which I I think might be, you know, the biggest show they've ever played as far as like, you know, how many people can fit in there other than opening for the stones, obviously. Uh, yeah. But, you know, that was, that's the biggest show they've ever played. And I think they only had the posters and like one shirt. So a bunch of stuff got delayed and got sold uh, at later places. That's where the, uh, the redo of the uh, twin shirt was supposed to, uh, to be oh. this year, but it, you know, it didn't show up there either. <laughs> yeah. That one's uh really popular. I've never been able to get that one. I know a lot of people <laughs> online have been trying to get that one. Yeah. Yeah. I still, uh, I still have my original one from, Oh wow. That have been 2006 or seven. Uh, and it is hanging on by a thread, uh, and only one thread at this point. So. <laughs> oh, wow. So when we're talking about the Easter eggs, one of the ones that we were trying to figure out, uh, the, the Portland show, and you highlighted on your Instagram uh, page, the the guy fishing on the roof, what's the reference to that? Uh, so he's sitting on top of the pharmacy, so he is fishing for another prescription. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, I get it now. 
Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, that, that one that that one is a fun one too. It's it's got quite a bit. You know, you've got the the OTB off track betting. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the I think my favorite uh, dumb joke that are in any of the posters, which is a lot of the times how I come to these little references is like, <laughs> what's like a dumb little joke we can put in here that'll make me laugh and, and make a couple people laugh when I send it to them is, uh, you know, her father's lawyer as the name of the law firm down there on the corner. <laughs> right. Um, it's like, that's not what it's going to be called, but you know, it, you get, you got to drive it home and, uh, you know, have not take it too seriously sometimes. So that one's <laughs> fun. So another cool thing that you did was, um, for open door policy, you did all the animal designs, right? Yep. And those are, I, I love those when they came out. They, um, so those were done on t-shirts and the coasters, I think. Did they make the record itself? I'm, uh, they are, they're on the inside in the liner notes, uh, right. with each, with each track. So that was, uh, that was actually Craig's idea. So Vance, uh, Wellenstein, who is a great designer, he, he did open door policy, and uh, Price of Progress and has done a couple things with Craig as well. Um, you know, he was doing the design and they were talking, trying to trying to find some themes throughout. And, you know, as they were looking through, Craig realized every song on the record has some sort of reference to an animal, um, whether mm-hmm. super direct or, you know, maybe a little bit of a stretch. I think the, the biggest stretch is on Spices, uh, we have a bunny because it mentions Easter, um, but you know, some of the other ones are you know straight there. You know, you've got hornets and things like that that are specifically mentioned. Um, but yeah, that was something from Craig where he he called me up and he was like, "Hey, we're you know doing a new record. Vance is going to do this one, uh, but want to get you to uh, do some illustration stuff for the inside. Um, and you know, here's a list of animals. Let's see what we can do with them. Awesome, huh?" And, yeah, and I really like your uh, your positive jam fest, where you pretty much just go with the uh, jelly jam welches almost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that one was a lot of fun. It was, you know, I think festival posters are always a little dicey to try to figure out. Um, you know, you want to you want to represent everybody, you know, as equally as possible. Um, but also need to highlight different things. You know, I think we did a good job there. It's a smaller festival, so it's easier. You know, you're not dealing with the 40 list, 40 artists list there or anything where it's like three people are huge and 20 people are kind of big. And then, you know, we were able to say, <laughs> all right, this is, this is this old steadies festival. They're obviously going to be up here front and center. And then everybody else is, you know, just the same, like, we need to treat everybody the same because all of these artists are amazing. Um, and then just the idea, you know, positive jam, we're on a farm. I'm like, Oh, you make jam from fruit. Let's, uh, let's do fruit stickers. Um, <laughs> and, and those were fun to put together. A lot of those, uh, fruit stickers themselves, you know, t- with the, with the hold steady one, it's just like the, the, uh, the jelly jar, uh, the Smucker's jelly jar. And then the, uh, the other artists, are actual just like old, you know, fruit stickers that you can find on things that, you know, have been repurposed. I think my favorite is the tallest man on earth one has that, has that guy on there. I think it was from like a pineapple or something <laughs> from like Argentina, maybe. I was like, that's a cool looking sticker. I was just, you know, searching, uh, Googling like old fruit stickers to see what I could find and then pull inspiration from there. And, uh, that one was a really fun one to put together. Awesome. And when you talk about the the concept of equal time, like I think a really good example of that, while it's not a festival, um, the Boston show, uh, the Hold Steady Dinosaur Jr. one, um, for people who don't know that one, that's the one with the two snakes. And it's literally two posters in one, depending on which way you hang it. Um, yeah. The, the Dinosaur Jr. side and the Hold Steady side. Yeah. I thought that, that was, you know, that was one. It was like, we're doing a co-headlining thing. I was like, all right, how do I do a co-headlining thing? I was like, we can either hang it sideways or you can go whichever way you want up, down, sideways. It works, works whichever way. Um, which I thought that one was really fun. There was a, I believe I'm trying to remember who it was. I think it was actually uh, aesthetic apparatus who I, you know, mentioned earlier as one of the reasons I got into uh lifter puller. They did a joint tour poster for, I think it was like, we are scientists and art brute um, maybe 15 years ago. 
And they just did two posters that were exactly the same, but the background had the names over and over and over again in, you know, a different color for each one. And it was like, you highlighted one and you could go to the show and you could get both. You could get one. They, uh, they had it on each one, but kind of highlighted it in a different way, which I thought was interesting as well. So, you know, started there as my idea. And then I was like, I don't think we can print two different posters. Come on, let's just figure out how we can do this in one. So then, Nick, I, I just wanted to, you know, a lot of our listeners here might not have Instagram open, so they might not be, remember all your posters. I think everybody knows the Thrashing Through the Passion album cover. So can you just yeah. talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so that one that one was super eh, intense to do, I guess. Uh, you know, I think that's probably the thing I spent the most on just because of how technical it was. Um you know, as Craig and I were talking through through it, that one was kind of born out of all of the uh, pre-release singles artwork. So all of those singles that came out before were, you know, scenes from somewhere. Um, sometimes they were pretty specific for the song and sometimes got a little bit looser. But once uh, once we knew we were doing the full album, it was like, you know, we really like this idea of these are just many sketches of places that could happen in a song. Um, but what happens if you kind of zoom out from that and uh, see where those things actually are? So we didn't, we didn't pull all of the things that were on the singles into the full, you know, village, as we like to call it from traditional village song. Um, mm -hmm. But there's a few that, you know, carried over from those original singles and you get to see them in the scene. Um, but just that was the full idea there was, you know, how do we how do we have this idea of these songs are taking place, you know, in in a world? Uh, what does that world look like and what what would inhabit that? Um, so that that one was really fun. But that's the mo I think that's the most technical, you know, drawing I've done. And that one really, you know, as I say, I don't ever draw the full thing, you know, that one was just 100% painstakingly drawn on some crazy hexagonal grid to give it that, uh, uh, you know, perspective. Um, that one was, that one was a lot of fun to do. Awesome. Well, wow, yeah. So which was your favorite piece to design for the band? Mm, my favorite one that I've done. I, I think it is that Earl poster. I mean, it's the first thing that I did. I think it, you know, especially the early days of, you know, the band, there was, it's so rich with references to other artists and other songs. And, you know, that was one of the things that really pulled me in after, you know, lifter puller. I was like, yeah, I'm going to, I'll check this out. And then you see all these references and, it, you know, it's, kind of like a you know an i spy or a word search or whatever like like i know i know that's a reference but i don't know what it is so then i gotta go see who it is and figure it out and go through and you know I, it's also the first you know real thing doing together so there's there's some of that nostalgia to it um but yeah i, I think in the early days that's that's a lot of what i thought about with them was like oh these guys like the same stuff that i like you know, the, the, all these bands are awesome. And then the ones that, you know, the, there may be a little bit of a, you know, side shoot where you're like, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to listen to that, but I appreciate that there's a reference to, you know, Dancing on the Ceiling by Lionel Richie. You know, everybody knows that. And you know, I think that's my favorite part of that is you've got the clump of everybody and then you've got one dude turned upside down with his feet on the, you know, on the top of the box that they're holding all in. I think that's one that people are always like, I looked at that first to figure out what was going on. And then I was like, <laughs> oh, Dancing on the Ceiling. I get it. <laughs> Nick, you said like the the groups like the same things you you like. Uh, we had Steve Salvage on this show, and I, I had to ask him about his Air Jordan ones because it's such a big part of his persona. And then I look and I see on, on your Instagram, you got uh, what's your connection with? Do you have a connection with Air Jordan ones? Do you like them or? Uh, I am quite obsessed with shoes as well. Um, <laughs> I do have a lot of Jordans. Uh, I've actually made a, a custom pair of Jordans myself from scratch, which was pretty fun. Awesome. Uh, wow. And yeah, so, you know, it, Steve and I have talked about that a ton. Uh, you know, when 
when I show up to the show, we'll always kind of greet each other and both immediately look down and see what, <laughs> what the other person is wearing. Um, yeah, so I th- yeah, I think, uh, I think at this point I've, uh, I've tailed off a little bit, mostly because I've run out of space in my closet to put any more <laughs> shoes in. Um, I converted all of the hanging spaces to shelves and now wow. I'm just one row of, uh, shirts and pants because I'm a casual guy, but you know, <laughs> quite a few pairs of shoes. <laughs> Wow. All right. And you said you're working on a poster now. Uh, can, can you give us a hint? Um, let's see. Yes. Uh, it's, you know, it's for the summer and <laughs> I might be constructing some stuff in it. So, okay. hmm. but yeah, it's a, I, I'm supposed to be finishing it very soon. So I'm sure you guys will see it very soon as well. Excellent. Awesome. And then Nick, I just want to ask you one that, um, you know, you, you said you put the initials of the, the band, you kind of hit them in there, and that kind of reminded me of like a, one of the Led Zeppelin covers. So like if you could go back in time, the 60s, mm-hmm. 70s, 80s, and design a poster for any band, have you ever thought about which one you'd want to do? Hmm. I have not thought of that. Um, you know, it's tough because legitimately, I mean, the whole city is my favorite band. Like I feel like I'm <laughs> kind of living the dream um, already. <laughs> um so yeah, I, I think I'll leave it leave it at that. I think there's plenty that I could uh, do, but in the end, you know, designing a bunch of stuff for your favorite band is pretty damn cool. Whoa, there you go. That was a great interview, guys. I, I mean, I was really surprised at everything Nick had to say. I didn't. I thought he was did other bands too, but he just he loves the whole study so much. It seems like he really concentrates on that. Before we let Nick go, we had him do a version of "From Meatloaf to the Billy Joel." Here we go. Warm beer to the summer smoke, and the meatloaf to the Billy Joel. Certain songs they get so scratched into our souls. Titus Andronicus is one of my other favorites. Um, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people probably know them already. Oh, I never wanted to change the world, but I'm looking for a new New Jersey. Cause trans like us, baby, we were born to die. Not this past Massive Nights, but the uh, so 2022. I was standing out front of uh, the Brooklyn Bowl and Patrick from Titus Andronicus was standing out there. We kind of looked at each other and he was like, I bet that guy, you know, recognizes me. And I was like, you're Patrick, right? And he was like, yeah, what's up, man? I was like, hey, how's it going? You know, I was like, I actually met you, uh, you know, like 13 years ago. Uh, I did a poster for them at the Earl as well. Oh, nice. Um so, you know, we talked about that for a second and he was like, wait, is it the one where there's like all the, you know, old military guys from the Civil War and there's a guy there on the stretcher? I was like, yep, that's it. He's like, I actually have that one in my bedroom. Um, I was like, yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, one of the more exciting, uh, you know, random encounters that I've had. I think probably who I've been listening to the most is uh, Jeff Rosenstock. Uh, Brendan, who uh, I assume you guys know, Brendan Hilliard, who uh, does a lot of the social media stuff for the band. Um, Him and I have become really good friends over the last uh, few years. Just uh, talking about this, I'll kind of go back and forth with him on a lot of the poster stuff. But I think it was... uh, Maybe two or three years ago, he was like, hey, you should check this guy out. I think you'll like it. And I was like, yep, I definitely like it. And, you know, I kind of just – I've – last year, you know, on the uh, on Spotify at the end of the year, they're like, here's your Spotify rap. And, you know, showed you all of your, uh, all of your stats, who you listen to the most, how many hours, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is a secret that I'm telling in public. Uh, but last year was the first year that the whole study did not take my top spot in the last, wow. uh, you know, seven or eight years. And, uh, Jeff Rosenstock, uh, slid in there, uh, this year. So oh, wow. that was, uh, I was surprised when I saw it, but, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it, 
I think they'll forgive me, so it'll be okay. <laughs> so for for the few that may not know who Jeff Rosenstock is, where would you say a good jumping off point? What's your favorite song or how would you introduce somebody to Jeff Ros- Rosenstock? Yeah. Um, so his album, Worry, is probably my favorite one. And the first track on that just puts me on the floor just about every time. Someone's gonna bleed and dribble trails in the snow Stretch into the bus from an overstuffed Yeah, it's it's really similar to the Hold Steady and Craig Solo stuff. You know, sometimes in you know tone and musical style, but really, you know, I think of them similarly because it's it's just storytelling. You know, he's he's out there telling a story um, in all the songs. And that's, you know, that's what I really connected with um, on, on those. And, you know, the Worry album, you know, has quite a few where I'm like, oh, I know exactly what that is, um, yeah, which sometimes was exciting and sometimes was sad because I was like, oh, yeah, I've, I've gone through that stuff, too. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it, it was just connecting to it on that kind of lyrical level. And then the music itself is just fantastic as well. He, uh, he used to be in a band called Bomb the Music Industry, um, which was a little bit more funky and ska-ish sometimes, um, where his solo stuff is, you know, a little bit more, you know, just rock, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, but it, it really does just kind of come back to the, to the lyrics for me, for him. And, you know, just the, the emotion in the, uh, in the singing as well, which I think is something that Craig's great at as well, where I, you know, draw the comparison, you know, I don't think either one of them, you know, I don't think many people would think of them as, you know, technically impressive singers. Like you're not going to go to the opera and be blown away by an aria that either one of them are doing by any means. But, you know, the the way they sing and the, the inflection that they have, you know, just adds to the emotion and adds to the story of it. And, you know, it's not about hitting notes, it's about hitting emotions. So, Nick, I just want to thank you for uh, for giving us the time. This was awesome. And um, if it's all right with you, we'll take uh, some of the posters we referenced today and put them on our Facebook uh, along with the, the link to this episode so people have a visual reference. Yeah, perfect. And, um, this was awesome. And, yeah, uh, this was a lot of fun, guys. I keep up the it. amazing work on the uh, uh, on the artwork. I don't know where I'm going to hang your next couple of posters. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> and then, oh, and then, Nick, is there any – Anything you want to plug or anywhere where our listeners can find you at like your Instagram or anything else? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Instagram's there. I mean, the, the, I don't know if I want to say interesting part, but you know, the whole study is the, uh, the only people that I do kind of this work for, uh, my day job, I actually work at a software company as a, uh, software designer. Um, so, you know, if you guys need some learning software, uh, you know, just let me know. I, I love it there, but it's a completely different world. Um, but yeah, they, that this is the last little, you know, foot into the, the poster world that I still have as a, uh, as an adult who has much more responsibilities like now, now um, we can't spring. do free posters for free shows um, like I used to in my 20s. We should get set up before we sleep. Feels like now we're in this pretty tape. We should get set up before we sleep. Well, that was really something I gotta say I agree with. Uh... Titus Andronicus. I've talked about them a few times on this podcast, so uh, I always appreciate anytime somebody else agrees with me on them. So that was great to hear his uh, choices for Meatloaf to the Billy Joel. That, he had a great Titus story, too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? It's real interesting to hear that the band has been such part of the Hold Steady uh, history and lore for so long now, and it's kind of how I discovered them. So it's uh, it was great. I was totally into it, which sort of brings us to 
the return of a segment, which a lot of people seem to love. We had kind of shelved the past few episodes, but uh, we're going to return to Diamonds in the Drain. Yeah. Uh, hey, Mike, why don't you explain to us the new rules of Diamonds in the Great Drain? We're, we're revamping it. This is like Diamonds, I would say 3.0 at this point, right? Because we did it once and then we did the, the last three records. So now what are we doing this time? So guys, you know, we had so much success. We used to do Diamonds in the Drains just off random songs when we first started. That was edition one. Then we did uh, Diamonds in the Drains, the last three albums. We'd roll the dice and whatever track number came up, we would have we'd uh, give them assign them a gold, silver, and bronze medal. And that was that was really popular. So now we're coming out with Diamonds in the Drain 3.0, the Dirty Dozen, and we got a lot of Ds in here. It's Diamonds in the Drain, Dirty Dozen. We're using D&D dice, which stands for Diamonds in the Drain, or Dirty Dozen, which, what does it stand for, guys? But So I'm going to roll a 12-sided dice, and the first four albums, now you're saying, now, wait a minute, there's four albums. How are we going to get gold? silver bronze but we're gonna have a fourth category off the podium so it's gonna be a little more cutthroat than the rest of them guys so you guys ready okay i'm gonna roll my 12-sided dice here let me know if you can hear it all right what'd you get and we got a three and and i think three might be some big songs yeah this is gonna be a hard one so like what makes this rough is like the first four records are arguably everybody's like have to be favorite songs on these records, right? Like this is where we all got started. This is original stuff uh, into the most popular stuff, um, stuff that makes up the what what makes the concerts what they are. Stuff that makes the storyline what it is because the storyline's gonna gonna be on Separation Sunday, but it touches almost Kill Me and Boys and Girls, and arguably people will say that it, it goes beyond that. There's a lot to consider here. This is gonna be a hard one. Well, it's tough, too. And as people know at home, you know, Almost Killed Me originally, when you first got into it, it was only 10 tracks. So we're doing the deluxe edition so we could get 12 on each. Uh, and some people, as we get into this, are going to realize, like, the song we leave off the podium is probably going to end up being their favorite. And we might get some heat for that. Because even this one, when you look at the third track on all of these records, it's a pretty big dogfight. I, I do just off the top of my head, I, I think G's going to have a hard time with some of the Sophie's choice, especially what number three is off of Stay Positive. Like, no doubt. Uh, you know, so, uh, I mean, we All could right. get into it. Why don't we, like, break down for everybody listening at home what track three of each album is? Okay. Track three of of Almost Killed Me is going to be Barf Root Blues. Kids with broken hearts and kids with broken bones. Stones, given birth to bloody yeah, and then off of Separation Sunday is our sort of where the name of our show comes from. Uh, your little hood rat friend. Your little hood rat friend makes me sick. But after I get sick, I just get sad. Cause it burns being broke. Hearts to be heartbroken. And always being both must be a drag. She's been calling me. Mike, why don't you tell them what's on uh, Off of girls. Boys and Girls in America, and these are all killer songs, is Hot Soft Light. And, and then, G, I'll let you get the stay positive one only because uh, I know it's a favorite, but it could... Uh, yeah, this absolutely is a favorite. One for the cutters from Stay Positive. Um, this is definitely going to be difficult. When there weren't any parties, she'd park by the quarry, walk into the woods until she came to a clearing where townies would gather and drink. It's going to be difficult as we do the, the whole game. Um, but but this, this particular track will be interesting. So uh, why don't we get into it? Who's, who's going to go first? Well, I think just for uh, continuity, we should let Mike go first because Mike has always gone first, and then you can go, and then I'll go, and then we'll kick. Uh, we'll give out the totals. All right, Mike, you're up. Oh, thanks, guys, for making me do these. These are 
some four difficult songs here and you're making me go first. Um, I know this is an audio podcast, but for everyone listening at home, Mike literally has sweat dripping down his forehead right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm tolling off to right do. now. <laughs> um, so I guess I'll start with the gold medal. Uh, this one, I feel like I don't have a choice. Uh, the name of the podcast is the Hood Rat Recap. Um, I think your little Hood Rat friend, it was the very first um, Hold Steady song I ever heard. It's what got me into the band. And in fact, the, the line the line that got me into the band was, you know, City Center used to be the center of our dreams. Now City Center's over. No one really goes there. So my original girlfriend worked down at um, City Center and she didn't have a car. So I always had to go pick her up there. So we had a lot of great uh, dreams there. But then, you know, eventually the Mall America opened and City Center was over. No one really went there. So when I heard that line of the song, I was like, this song or this line and this song totally nail it. But it's only for me. No one else is going to get it. So. I just don't know how the universe works because now that's the line that everybody throws confetti on at the concert. So that's mm -hmm. just amazing to me. So that's my number one song. And then I can't believe I'm giving a silver medal to hot soft light because, um, that's one of my top 10, probably hold steady songs. At first I kind of ignored it for a while because boys and a girl in America had so many strong songs on it. I would just like skip over it. But eventually, I think I think that's just amazing. Like, you know, he says we're kicking it with cousins. And when he sings it in Minnesota, he he changes it to the football, you know, Kurt Cousins. And then I which I think is cool. And then he says, you know, cousins, we we're going to go out clubbing. But then we just stayed around drinking. It sounds like a real story. And I, I just love all the imagery in that song. You know, tighten up its tentacles is some of the best lyrics Craig's ever written. I really love the guitar work by Tad in that one. So that only gets a silver. You know, it's probably one of my top 10 songs, but I'm a fraud. You guys know I have 50 top 10 songs. But, and then, so I guess I'm going to have to go bronze to one for the cutters. I like that song. I know some people are kind of off on it. I think it might be the most unique song in their whole ca catalog. I think it's really the biggest Franz flex in the whole catalog where he's, Franz is really doing the heavy lifting there. I really enjoy that song. I love the storyline to it. It's it really stands out more than any other song in their catalog, even maybe more than Carlos is crying. I think, so I give that the bronze. And then, unfortunately, you know, we have to pick an off the podium song that gets zero points. I'm gonna have to go with Bar Fruit Blues. Um, I think it's a good song to. It's on their first album. It's it's a good. It gives us a lot of clues of what's to come, all the fun stuff that's gonna come. I love when he says, you know, um, it's good. You're, it's good to see you're still in a bar band, baby. And, and I love when he sings it live. He says, it's good to see that you're still in the bar, bar, bar. Um, I really love that part of it. But unfortunately, um, I think Bar Fruit Blues, you know, if you run your fastest race in the Olympics, you still, if you end up going against Usain Bolt, uh, Carl Weathers, and Ben Johnson when he was all juiced up, you're still going to end up off the podium even if you ran a good race. So that's my order. What do you got, Casper? All right. So yeah, this is definitely difficult. Um, and like I said, there, there are things to consider here. I mean, first we're talking about which is the best song of these four songs, right? So you're just a song as a song, which do you like the best? And But for me, then it kind of goes into the, the whole lore of the Hold Steady, the story of the Hold Steady. These songs touched them, well, with the exception of one for the cutters. Uh, people have said, I know um, Clicks and Hisses references, uh, that it is part of the story. I don't think it is. I think it's a standalone story in and of itself. Um, it's kind of up for, for interpretation. Then there's performances live. I mean, like some of these songs that where like Steve really wails, or like you said, Franz has a huge part of one for the cutters. Like there's so much to consider. That being said, um, best song, um, I would say, Honestly, Hot Soft Light is is out of these four the the top song in when you take every category into consideration. Um, it is one of my favorite songs. It's also a song that's huge when you go see them live. Um, it does encompass the storyline. It, it's it's touching what's going on and and it's integral to the story. And it's it's also where there's some amazing guitar solos live. It's the song itself is 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 awesome. That's my gold. I think you have to give it to your little hood rat friend next because I mean, that's pretty much like their first single, right? This is, this is the song that wound up on Tony Hawk. This is the song that like, it's the entry point for a lot of people. Um, 
it's also where we named our podcast after. <laughs> it's where we throw confetti. It's it's such a huge part of it, and and it's essential to the storyline. Um, so yeah, it's got to be up there. Uh, but for me, it's number two. Um, number three, I'm gonna go with. Uh, one for the cutters because I love that song so much. Um, I would love to make it my number one. I, I love the harpsichord part that Franz does. I, I, I love the storyline that to me is very self-contained and it's, it's kind of a perfect song uh, to me. I know a lot of people don't agree, but putting bar fruit blues on off the podium is a little rough. That's a deep cut. That's, that's something that people look to hear uh, live. It's something we don't get to hear often. It's a song I will crank up when I'm, when I'm in the car, because I I love it, but in these four, that that's that's my order. Wow, <laughs> wow, that's a, a hard act to follow with what you both did. And sometimes I'm glad I get to go last because when I hear you guys pontificate and then get to say you're wrong makes me happy. <laughs> but, uh, I will say this: uh, I agree with Mike for the gold. I'll start with gold too. Um, your little hood rat friend, when you bring up all the categories that you were just talking about, the live performance, the song, how great that is, you know, I'm you're way more into the story lore than I am. That never really goes into my enjoyment of the song because I take each piece sort of as a standalone, not how it fits in the overall uh, story arc. But for me, your little hood rat friend is easily my favorite song. It's the confetti song, which people know my stake on the, you know, the story of the confetti. Um, we name our podcast after it, but all in all, I, I love that song. It's one of my favorites. My silver is the one you both threw off the podium. Uh, <laughs> Bar Fruit Blues. I got to say, I, I really enjoy that song. I love when they play it live. What Ma what Mike was saying about when Craig sings it live and he really drives the home, the point home about being uh, in the bar band. And great to see him back in the bar is really awesome. But also, like, I love at the end when he talks about half the crowd is calling out born to run and half the crowd is born and out born to lose. Like, it's such a dichotomy because you're talking about two very different styles and between the influence of Springsteen and the influence of punk rock and with whether, you know, I guess there's some debate if people are talking about the bouncing souls or social D. I don't know if it's ever been clarified, but they both have songs named born to lose in the punk world. I'll leave that to somebody to let me know otherwise, but I just love it. To me, that's my silver. Um, I always took it as as social D, but is that a cover? The the social D born to lose. It's a very good question. I'm not sure. I, I also like look. It's an interesting you, you, the point that you're making there. It's like that's very representative of the scene itself mm -hmm. because there is like that not even a split. Like people, this is music that people love from all different spectrums and it's 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 almost like a nod to the audience but i'm sorry to interrupt again no it's fine but i <laughs> that's why i couldn't let this fall off the podium even though you guys i did such and really come on when he sings it's great to see you back in the bars when you're in the show the arms are being thrown <laughs> everyone's screaming it like it's such a moment and you guys are like yeah it's cool i like the harpsichord on one for the cutters better We'll get to that later. Don't, um, don't, don't get me wrong. This was hard. You Like you I, said, this I, I wasn't said, this Sophie's was choice. I know. This is very <laughs> tough. Um, my bronze is hot, soft light. I love the tune. I love when you see it live and they do Chips Ahoy right into it. Mm. It's always a cool moment because uh, it plays like it does on the record. Um, and as a guy who loves Stay Positive is one of his favorite records. One for the Cutters is probably one of my least favorite songs. I get it. But where it comes in the sequence right after Sequestered in Memphis, it it's such a a sort of step out that that was my off the podium for me compared to these other tunes, which I just have such a stronger affinity towards throughout the years. I mean, I was just in L.A. in Amoeba and I was scrolling through and they had a, a vinyl reissue of Boys and Girls in America, which I didn't have. And I picked it up and I brought it home this weekend. I can't wait to unwrap it. So. Those are my picks for it. So now if we're going to look at the totals of what we got, it's a little interesting. Clearly, the gold winner for this uh, first installment return of Diamonds in the Drain goes to your little hood rat friend with a total of eight points. Our second goes to Hot Soft Light with six points. And then... 
which we didn't think could happen, but it did happen. We have a tie for a third as one for the Cutters and Barfruit Blues both got two points each. Interesting. So, out of week one, the clear goal is your little hood rat friend. All right, guys. So we got a tie there. Another feature we're going to have is we're going to put polls up on Facebook and Twitter. The Twitter, it'll be our page. And then Facebook's weird. It doesn't let us do it on. So we're going to have to do it on the positive posting fan page that I think almost everybody who listens to this podcast is on. So yeah, you can vote as many times as you want on the Facebook poll and the Twitter poll. And what we figured out last time is that Facebook and Twitter, we thought it was the same people, but the polls would come out in the opposite. <laughs> one was North Pole and one was South Pole. They were totally opposite order. So so we will and we will give your results of how you voted on the next episode on the next ep- or on the next version of Diamonds in the Dream. So cool. Awesome. And that's going to do it for us on this episode. It was great to hear you guys interview. I also, uh, it's great to have Diamonds in the Drain back. It'll be fun to see the next 11 episodes of what we come up with as we uh, break this stuff down. If you like what we do, give us a like, a follow. Uh, We do this because you guys listen. We do really appreciate the support and everybody that kind of chimes in. Uh, It gives us validation and we kind of just enjoy talking about the band we all love. And uh, Gasper, why don't you tell them where they could find us on socials? You could find us on all the social um, media outlets, but the best place to find anything Hood Rat Recap is our link tree, which is L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash The Hood Rat Recap. Uh, please go there, check out this episode, check out all our episodes, and hit our social media. And we'd love to know what you thought on Diamonds of a Drain and uh, what your thoughts on the songs are. Yeah, everybody. So leave us a voicemail on the show notes. You just click on the link there and leave us a voicemail. That would be great. But And I just wanted to say for all the guys there, we really appreciate all the uh, listens we've been getting. The numbers have been crazy. I personally think we have uh, saturated the market on hold steady fans who also listen to podcasts. So (laughs) I just want to ask you a little favor. You got your little music head friend that never listens to podcasts. He just keeps telling you about these annoying new groups that he knows that you never heard of. So we are on all the music. So we are on Amazon Music now. We were we have always been on Spotify. We we're on iHeart. We're on um, all the music apps, YouTube music. So if you could just hook your friend up, get them set up, put our podcast on their music app. So tell them we play a lot of music, so they could that would really help us out a lot. If we can get some new, we're on Audible for your little friend that only listens to uh, books all the time. <laughs> we're also on Audible now. So just uh, set up our apps on their phones, help them set it up so they they can get into the world of podcasting because it's amazing. So that's all I got. (laughs) All right. So uh, I'm Gasper. That's Mike. That's Kevin. And that was Nick Holloman, artist behind the Hold Steady posters we all know and love. And us guys and all you guys and gals, we are all the Hood Rat Recap. Shower party, (laughs) some You're born a schmuck and you'll die a schmuck. Welcome to hell, idiot.